Mike Bond here with Jake Shields, who's uh, obviously been a part of the news over the past few days after his uh, incident with Mike Jackson at the UFCPI. Jake, uh, I did have Mike. I spoke yep. with him a few days after this, and I know you saw the interview and you know, had some thoughts on it and some things you wanted to say. Uh, so I'll just give you kind of the floor uh, if you want to explain what happened uh, between you two, what led to that, and anything uh, that you feel he said that was incorrect that you want to rectify on your end. Yeah, I think most of it was incorrect. First, I just want to say, you know, thanks for getting back to me. I saw the interview, and initially, I was extremely critical of you. I DM'd you and said, like, why would you allow some guy to just repeatedly call me a Nazi and white supremacist and whatnot without uh, without question what that even means? These words are such serious words, and, you know, you let it go. But I mean, I got your point. You just wanted to let him talk. I think he made himself look bad because it's, uh, it's just so beyond ridiculous to call someone a Nazi repeatedly without uh, – without explaining what you mean. And uh, yeah, there was, literally, there, there was a lot of lies in the stories. But first off, I'd never heard of Mike. We originally got into it because on Twitter, he started calling me a Nazi for no reason. I had no idea who he was, but I usually I would just block someone if they call me a Nazi, but I saw he was in the fight industry. So I'm extremely respected in the fight industry. Everyone in the fight industry, for the most part, loves me. No one's ever called me a racist, nor would they. So for this guy in my industry, thinking right with that, I told him, I go, when I see you, Mike, there's going to be consequences. You know I'm going to see you. And he just laughed at me, like, you ain't going to do nothing with your white tears, blah, blah. So I'm just like, okay, kid. And then, you know, I saw him at uh, saw him at the PI. And I go, I got in the cage. And I'm like, you said you, said you would fight me when you saw me, that I was uh, too scared of you because my white fragility. So let's go. And he just kept making excuses, saying, no, we're going to fight in Houston. My trainer already said we'd fight in Houston. I already called his trainer. His trainer said he was scared of me. His trainer apologized. His trainer said he was an embarrassment with his racism. Pretty bad with you know, a trainer saying that, but that's just where he's gone. He said Mike's, was over the last couple of years, that Mike's gotten to this black nationalism, hating white people. He said he wasn't like that till recently, and he apologized. But... Yeah, anyways, he got in the cage, and I'm trying to get him to come in, and he wouldn't come in, and then he called me Nazi, so I'm like, all right, I got out of the cage, I went over, slapped him, picked him up, threw him on the ground, slapped him a few times, I didn't punch him, because, you know, you punch men, you slap bitches, he's such a little bitch, so I slapped him a few times, he tried to gouge my eyes, like a little bitch, and he's like begging, he's like, please, someone help me, please, someone, someone get me off me, so, you know, my friends, you know, I wish they would let me slap him for... 30, 40 more times, but they pulled me off and that was kind of it. Okay. So, um, yeah, one of the things he had said is, I guess, like you pulled him down from behind and, you know, he's trying to frame it as like assault and things like that. Uh, I guess what's like your response to that was, I know you had said in another interview that he had thrown a punch on you. Like what exactly happened with all that? Yeah, he absolutely did not tag him from behind. I came out of the cage after him. I think he threw a punch on me or he went to push me. He came towards me when I was coming towards him. And I just remember I grabbed him. And it's kind of a blur when these fights happen so fast. But I kind of remember I just grabbed him and I just chucked him. He was so weak. Felt like a little girl. Just grabbed him, threw him on the ground. And that was when he started begging for help. And that's when I stepped him out and started slapping him. I was very careful not to punch him because I figured, you know, I'm just going to more humiliate him. He's not even, he's not worthy of me hitting him. He's so, he's so pathetic. Uh, you know, he's lucky that he, at the time of life where I've mellowed out and don't want to hurt him. The way he's he's gonna he's gonna end up getting hurt. This guy's grown up. He's clearly grown up in a really rich, soft environment and never really been around in the uh, any street life. And he's trying to play that game and he's gonna get hurt. He doesn't realize there's people that aren't gonna take it lightly being called a racist and a Nazi. Especially the weird part is I looked him up. He's three fourths white, one quarter black. He grew up playing like lacrosse, like the like you're trying to act like he's his hood thing. Like you're you grew up rich white sheltered and now you're trying to play the street life and there's people that are going to hurt you if there, if there wasn't consequences i would hurt him with him in jail i would go and put the guy to the hospital maybe worse worse he doesn't understand there's like consequences for this stuff he's going to run into some people and if he's not careful they're going to kill him but that's what he's talking himself into and he had said that uh, you had been banned from the UFCPI. Uh, can you give clarity on what's going on there? Was it just like for the day? Have they told you permanently not to come back? What's the situation there? I haven't talked to anyone from the PI. I would be really surprised if it's a permanent ban, considering, you know, I just slapped him. He's the one that uh, was calling me a Nazi. Nazi is an extremely serious thing to call someone. What if, uh, what if he had called my friend Dewey the N-word? Dewey would throw him on the ground and slap him around and everyone would be praising him as they should. I mean, pretty much everyone's praising me too. 100% of the fighters are, pra are praising me, including every black fighter. That should tell him something. 
But if I'm an Aussie, why is every single fighter praising me, not him? Shouldn't they all be taking, shouldn't all the other black and Jewish fighters be on his side for, uh, for him trying to stand up Nazis? It's so insane how unself-aware he is. And also, everyone there was with, with me was not white. Shouldn't that tell him something? The fact that, you know, they're not on his side. Oh, another thing he said that really upset me was my friend Dewey Cooper, who uh, happens to be black. Like, I'm friends with Dewey. But he's saying Dewey should have sided with him because he's one quarter black over over me, who's his actual friend. That's like, that's disgusting. He didn't use the word race trader, but he basically called Dewey a race trader for not helping him. Dewey didn't know him. Dewey even goes, I didn't know the guy was black. <laughs> like, like, he doesn't look black. He's not, you don't walk around. He goes, he goes around hollow racism, but he's not like people walk around thinking they see a black guy. They see a guy who looks like, you know, maybe Mexican or Middle Eastern it's just uh, to think every black guy is going to jump and help him. It's not how it works. People are uh, people are people are brothers over other things besides race. You know, we, most of us in MMA don't believe in this racist ideology. We're brothers on the mat. We train together. We don't think about like, oh, this guy's black. This guy's Middle Eastern. This guy's Mexican. I came up with a team of all Mexicans. I never thought about that. It doesn't like cross my mind like, oh, they're just my brothers. And this guy is so obsessed with race. It's It's really strange. And to be honest, I don't know if he even knows any black people. I've never seen him with a black person. And that is one point, you know, I can absolutely vouch for you. Go walk into any major MMA gym in the country. It's a melting pot of all sorts of cultures and races and things like that. That is one of the things about our sport that, you know, brings people together in a lot yes. of ways, for sure. Um, I guess one of the other things he had said that he intends to press charges. Has there been any actual movement on that front is that a real thing or as far as you know there's nothing on the legal side that's actually in motion i haven't been notified but i think he'll, he's a lawyer he'll probably press charges i think it's something he'll probably do he's a little bitch but uh i just don't think he's got a case man people can see his talking they can see him calling me a nazi they can see the racism he's saying i didn't hurt him i was just slapping him he was trying to gouge my eyes out He's been calling me a Nazi and white nationalist for months. That's defamation, you know? Luckily, people know me, and they know I'm not a Nazi. They know I'm not these things. But he could have badly hurt my career. He did hurt um, Pat Milicic's career. He got Pat Milicic fired from places. So he, he, you know, he already ruined Pat Milicic's career and put him broke. He was trying to do the same thing for me, but it didn't work. So I have a very strong defamation case. I've already talked to attorney. I don't plan on suing first, but if he does, I'm going to hit him with a huge lawsuit. And uh, what's he going to sue for? Getting slapped in the face. He didn't even get hurt. It's just, uh, it's just such, such a baby pathetic move. He has zero respect within the fight community. And I think even his own coaches are, uh, are considering dropping him. I think he's going... Uh, I don't see anyone want to associate with this guy. Who wants to be associated with a with a racist black nationalist that uh, the, the particular isn't even black and is, and is legit racist? Like I don't care if someone has a black pride or black power or Kane Blass's example has a huge brown pride tattoo on his chest. But Payne's a great guy, treats everyone with respect. He doesn't go around bashing white people because he has a brown pride. He's just proud of his skin color, and I'm and I'm fine with that. But this guy is a clear, clear racist. Which is strange. It's so it's weird because he didn't grow up that way. So I don't know. Apparently, something happened to him in the last couple of years. Maybe the colleges he went to pushing this weird woke ideology of of uh, white people are bad, and the fact that he had a small amount of black in him. Maybe his college professors treated him better and pushed him to be a racist. But I really hope he gets the mental health mental health help he needs because if not, he's gonna end up hurt. Right. And uh, last thing I want to ask you, um, I just want to give you a, a platform. I mean, you touched on a lot of it there. A lot of strong words said, a lot of big accusations um, and, you know, how this stuff kind of festers on social media and things get pushed here and there. Yes. Taken out of context. So is there anything that you just want to clarify about, you know, where you stand, what you believe in and whether it's what Mike accused you of or just in general? You know, I think Anyone that knows me, no, I don't have to explain those things. I have a great rep in the business. I've never, I've been accused of being racist a million times on social media, but never once by a person that's known me or met me or been around me. Everyone knows I have good values. Everyone knows I'm a man of my word. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. That's why I told Mike it was on site. Like, I, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I mean, I'm a man of my word. I believe you do what you say you're going to do. Everyone that's worked with me, everyone that's been around me knows I'm a man of honor. I think a lot of the MMA journalists just don't like me. That's uh, that's maybe why I thought that you were trying to, when I saw you, I thought maybe you weren't sticking up for me because uh, the MMA journalists, for the most part, have different politics than me. I don't judge people off their politics, but I know a lot of MMA journalists seem like they do for some reason. But uh, 
but no, everyone that's been around me knows I'm a good person. I'm honorable. Do what I say I'm going to do and treat everyone exactly equal. And if you deserve to get smacked, you get smacked regardless of what race you are. There you go. And, you know, I will say on my behalf, uh, I do uh, mirror some of those comments that you said and the fact that, you know, I want to give as the journalists want to try to be down the middle here. I want to give him an opportunity to say his piece and you opportunity. I don't think it is my position to inject my personal opinion or, you know, uh, go down these certain roads based off what's said. So I'm glad that, you know, you had your platform here to speak back yeah. and I appreciate you uh, being willing to get on here and talk about it. Yeah, you know, thanks for having me on so quick. Like I said, when, like when I when I saw him calling me a Nazi or whatever, you're not saying anything. I was like, yeah, I think you should have interjected. But I also see your perspective of not interjecting. So as long as you're consistent with uh, with how you do it, I can respect that, and that's fair. Okay, I appreciate you very much, Jake. Yep. Uh, hopefully, you know, things can blow over here and everyone yep. can kind of move on with life. But I appreciate great. your Thank time, you. and I hope you have a great day. Uh, yeah, have a good day. Bye. Bye.